Hi everyone and welcome to our Saturday session. Um, this is probably one of my favourite sessions just because anything goes. So get all your materials out, look at things that you've not used before, think about materials that you can find around the house um, that could possibly be translated into something that you want to create. So um, one of my favourites is to use coffee and some great artists if you want to have a look up um, on people that use um, materials around the home to create some amazing artwork. Um, another really good one is food colouring um, or you can steep tea bags and, and use the colour from those. Think about things that you generally have don't always have to go for the most expensive paints or um, you know, materials that seem uh, the best fit. Um, so today what I've got in front of me is a set of watercolours. I've got um, that lovely book that I've, I think I've shown you last time when we did our um, cactuses, Lizzie Lee's uh, collage carnival. Um, very well used now which is always great i love it when i see things that are starting to have a little bit of life put in them from me using them i've got a couple of paint brushes and one thing that i really love that i thought i'd share with you today is this uh, little thing called perry page um and it's a little mini printer that you can print off your own images you just come out on a receipt paper you don't need any ink it's just a roll and you can have lots of different colors you can have white or you can have blue you just pop it in and you can send things to it so which is really great for collaging and another nice little creative way and very digital focus um, which is great it's always good to use um, our phones for some creative things um, so if you want to have a look at those I think they're on Amazon um, probably about 15 quid I think they are to get always great as well if you've got things like college books or school books and you want to print things off and images and put them in there so lots of uses for that I've just got some really cheap highlighters, I've got uh, glue, all sorts of things. So what I'm going to focus on today is just drawing some birds or creating images around birds. I'm not going to use any references. Um, I'm just going to really let my imagination go, think about the colours that I'm going to use and just really try and mix quite a lot of materials to create something um, that I never normally would. All right, so I'm just going to swap my screen round. So hopefully you can see my setup here. I've just got a nice blank piece of paper. Um, and I'm just going to think about the shape. So a really good way to start this is to actually sketch out the shape. Um, of what it is that we're going to draw and if we remember um, from the last uh, session what we did the shape of a bird we know that it's got a triangle for a tail so think about these things I'm just going to sketch out a couple so and you don't have to do this we can you, you can totally do anything else that you want to do you don't have to do birds at all maybe you could do some fish from the session that we did for the underwater stuff. Um, yeah, so I've just got a couple of shapes there. And think about it, the order in which you're doing things. Do you want to lay down collage first, some paper first? Do you want to lay down some watercolours? How do you want to do it? So I think I'm just going to go with watercolours because that takes the longest to dry. Um, and I'm just going to go for this gorgeous orange paint it in nice and loose, let the water just run, just going to add paint where I want to, just being really spontaneous, I'm thinking about nice bright bold primary colours, colours that make me quite happy when I see them together, just dotting them about wherever I want them, no method to this. And then so we've got our watercolours down. It might be now that I want to add some collage. And think about what works best for you. Just going to this out. I've got some cool little different paper. Got some scissors here. And I'm just going to cut a couple of shapes out really that replicate the bird. Again, I, I, I'm feeling bright today. I'm feeling like I want to inject quite a lot of colour into my work. Warm outside. 
It's Saturday. I'm doing my art thing, no one's bothering me. I can just escape and do what I need to do a little bit. So I'm just going to cut out. Ooh, that looks nice near that yellow, doesn't it? Just some, some interesting shapes, really. And this is quite cool. And this book that I've got, I've got some text. It's quite nice. And, you know, with collage, don't forget to play around with where you want them to be. You don't have to glue it down straight away. You can have a go at um, changing the order, the composition. If we're going to be posh and use the right words, so the composition is how you place things on the page. Gorgeous little flowers. And a, a tip to, um, for you is if you're using things like watercolors and you've got to wait for them to dry, then always have a separate page that you can start on too. It just means that you're going to get loads more out of your time um, and you're not waiting for it to dry before you can move forward. So. That's exactly what we're going to do today. Glue these down. And I'm just showing you really how things can work together. But as we know, all our styles are different. And that's what's so great about art. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and come back to it. Hopefully you can see my second page there. And I'm going to use um, one of my printouts. This was actually from my niece, Iris. And it's a picture of Trez. Trev's our little sheepdog, um, and she drew this. So I'm going to include this in my next collage, just because it's pretty special. And I'm going to go for nice deep blues on this. And maybe later on, I've got this really cool white Posca pen. It's just a, a, a white pen that I might even draw over. And I'm thinking about how can I incorporate this? How can I use these materials? Well, Trev likes to be outside. What am I thinking of when I do this? And it's all about your feeling when you put this paint down or whatever material. But pick your theme and just go for it. There's no right, there's no wrong. And this is how we learn. We might think, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have put those things together or and this is our little time isn't it on a Saturday where we can just play see what comes out of it I think I quite like some gold as well golden blue never really used gold on some of my work before that's quite nice actually I, know, I always like leaving a bit of white space as well, so not totally filling the page. And so this has dried enough for us to start working on. And we'll go back to the other one. And I'm just thinking, what do we want to add to this? So maybe some details of the birds. And add some wings on top. Maybe some bird feet. And just like magic, Trev's walked into the room. He must have known that we were uh, talking about him. Cute. And some tail. Maybe I might even add some colour to that too. A nice dark blue head. Doesn't really want to go on this, but you can tease it so because the paper's shiny. Okay. And I'm gonna get a highlighter. We add some colour into this one too. A little beak. It's 
<laughs> These are fun. I love, I love it. So creative. Little eye. I like this little yellow part underneath where it shows us. I think we'll have this one pointing down. I'm just using a pen to do this with. It's quite cute. And it might be that we want to add some other detailing, maybe some pattern look quite good with this. So we can either use um, pattern to create with more paint. We could do some dots. Just have a play with your materials. It'd be interesting to see what you've got with you. How you can incorporate that. These could almost be like the little marks that you see uh, and the walking round, little footprints. And then maybe we could also add pattern with our paper. So get your image down first, what it is that you want to do, and then start adding detail and pattern over the top and I'm just cutting stripes into the page and I like it one side's got a ripped edge the other one's got a straight edge think about how you're going to place them I'm going to run this up the left hand side of the page. Like how you can see that watercolour poking through. Oh, that looking. And on this darker one, I'm going to again use that Posca pen, that white pen, put the eye in. could even draw over the top of that. So with these, you need to give them a really big shape. And we can even draw over the top. There you go. Get rid of that. There we go. Add some pattern over the top. And I love doing this, just building and building up different images. Starting with some a, a simple idea like birds and then just working lots of different patterns, stripes, details into it just to give it a really cool feel. A little eye. Mm. And don't forget, you know, you can always take a step back, really look at it and see whether you want to add something, what do you think is successful. Just get rid of that pencil line, but you could keep it. It shows your workings out. Now you've thought about it. So that's our first little mixed media done. Quite happy with that. Particularly like the watercolour, how it moves along with the collage in a nice way and now we're back to this one so we've got Trev and I think I'm going to use that white pen on these really dark areas that'll look quite nice and stand out 
Just do all of these little chevrons and some of those. Maybe this is Trev gone swimming. And it's important to put yourself into your work as well. So, you know, what's happened in your day, things that you've got around you that you love. That's what makes it even more unique. And you can get these white pens from anywhere really, or if you haven't got a white pen, use white paint. See what the differences are. Again, just have a play. I'm thinking, hmm, what's Trev's favourite things? And that is sausages. So I wonder if we can put some sausages on here. Thank you. Let's find a good colour. So don't forget, you can either rip out or you can, if you're not feeling so confident, you can draw on there. And be as playful as you want to be. This is our time where we could use our imagination and create anything. Create little stories with our work. Just cut them out. And again, we can come back to the placement later on. And you wouldn't really know what that was apart from my own representation. That's good. And then the other thing that Trev really likes actually is a pheasant. So, and his name is Paul, Trev's little toy. Cut that body out. Right there. Uh, he has a green head. Again, just cutting these materials out. Maybe a bit smaller. And keep adjusting as you go. So what we need is a bright beak in there. We haven't glued them down yet. That's okay. Print it on nice and thick so it covers that page. And I'm sure pheasants' feet, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the dark, dark blue. No, it doesn't have to be like anything like it. We can just, we know what we mean. And we've got these amazing tails that are really long. Quite like that painted over, pretty. Put the eye in. I'm going to do white down first and then I'll put the black in to make it even stand out even more. And then sausages, we could put a little shine on them. So a nice way to do a little shine is by adding a little bit of white. So like they just come out with a pan. 
fab. And then I think we'll add a nice contrasting colour to blue is orange. So I think we'll add some orange down the side. This is going to make that blue really stand out. But I'm just thinking about how I'm using my brush. Just dabbing it on. <laughs> I really like this little montage. Looks rev. And it's so much more meaningful when you use things that are personal to you. You know, you could be looking at this going, oh. But that, that's great because, you know, yours will have so much more meaning for you too. And I love just trying to create different marks on the page and see what that looks like. It's quite sort of like abstract, I would say. Expressionist, so we're expressing things around us, our emotions, how we feel about them. We're adding some interest, different complementary colours. Don't forget you can use images from magazines for mixed media. Use absolutely anything, cardboard, newspaper. These are just a couple of things that I've got to hand today. But if you really wanted to think about the stuff that you're doing, get outside, get some, you know, leaves and twigs, and natural materials, see what you can find. It's nothing better than spending a day knocking about outside, trying to find some really cool stuff to make art with. Especially when we're lucky if we've got some good weather. Just gluing these in. And now I've painted them on, I can actually see where it should marry up as well. That's a little tip for you. You have to be quite careful <clears throat> if you're going to do that, but you can work. <clears throat> and maybe some feathers to our pheasant. Long tails, lots of different marks. Uh, my pen here, black pen. This is a waterproof one I'm called uh, Microns. Quite useful. Draw that little eye in there. Oh, I bet Trevor'd love him. Okay. And I think maybe to add some more detail, maybe just some stripes. Just think about, you know, the detail that you want to put in. It's all very spontaneous, there's no rules. <laughs> I like this one. I think we need something up at the top here. I might use this colour to give it some balance. We've already used it on Paul the Pheasant's head. This was the stuff, as I say, we used to build and make the cactus. It's quite nice. Trim that down. Glue it on. Should help us to bring it together. So these are our two so far that we've created. Really bright, colourful, cute. I'm just going to probably fit in one more. Let's get so you can see. Fab. Um, and I think we're going to go for some nice sunshine yellow 
Again, I'm feeling these happy colours, these primary colours. I'm thinking of being in the garden. Bring down colour. What's really nice with watercolour is drawing in when it's wet as well. So have a play around with using materials when they're dry, when they're wet. Let's add some stripes in. Another great thing about using different paints is when they're wet, letting colours bleed into them, seeing what effect that's got. Go for it, don't hold back. I'm thinking about maybe flowers. Having some dashes. And a nice dark green. Oh, that's luscious. I think I'm going to use the poppy print that I had from my little Perry Page machine. Stick that there. quite nice so I stuck it over the watercolours and I don't know if you can pick that up but you can actually see the watercolour underneath which is something new that I'm learning it's fab and maybe this story is about sitting out in the garden reading a book chilling out so it's inspired by you know these pieces of paper let me throw them down it could be absolutely anything. As I say, this has no rules. Cute. You can even create some abstract shapes with your paper too. Have a look at the constructivists. There's a movement with people that used to use collage and mixed media. Um, a really cool mixed media to use is like plaster. If you've got plaster of Paris, pile that on. Let's just add this on. Let's look again, how a trusty plaster pen. Add some scribbles, maybe imitating writing. And just think about your theme, think about you know what surface is for you when you think about it. And with like wet paint, you can either make marks with your thumb, your fingers. Thank you. I need something over here, I think. Mm. I get totally lost in this type of stuff because it's nice thick black pen. I'm totally lost in this type of stuff because it's just so you can you can carry on and carry on and carry on. You don't necessarily need to stop. But it's always good to look back and think, you know, now's the time. Maybe we could put in some mm, that size of that blending. Some marks over the top. That's cool. So I'm just copying that shape from the red as if it's almost underneath and it's living underneath. And then one last thing really before I go, so say for example, you're not too sure on what area works well, or you don't know um, if you like it, then cut out a viewfinder. And a viewfinder is just a square piece of paper, fold it in half, any bit of scrap will do. And you wanna just cut the middle out so you're making a frame. Be very careful with the scissors. So you just wanna cut out the middle bit, 
and you've got a little frame and what you can do is actually find areas of your work that you really like within that frame and then what you can even do is paint a huge picture of just those little segments so there's loads of interest there that I could find loads of nice little abstract pieces think about your balance so let's recap what we've done today other than um exploring um uh, collage watercolors pens highlighters um we've we've thought about how to layer materials we've looked at colors and what colors work well together we've done a little montage to try and we finished off with a lovely little piece around being outside bright vivid colors and lots of lots of materials so have a go feel brave and um see what you can find and what you want to put together to tell your own own stories thanks everybody for joining me today don't forget to keep in touch with us and um, you can go to our instagram or twitter at neuro champions and definitely share your work there i look forward to seeing it bye for now everyone thank you and i'll see you soon